Hello, 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 everyone. It's Kim from KNRP here in southeastern Manitoba. It is currently 26 degrees Celsius with a humidex that makes it 30 degrees, which is 84 degrees Fahrenheit, humidex at 86. It is hazy out today, partly cloudy. They're talking about rain, maybe some thunderstorms this afternoon. But I'm down here in the basement and all is good. I just realized I have to put on the backlight. So just bear with me a second while I go and do that. I'm still here. I just have to go around the corner and cut the light switch. There we go. Otherwise, it's kind of dark and I get lots of shadows. Okay. So today we're going to make gnomes. I'm Hey, Belinda. Welcome. Welcome. I, I'm not sure what kind of gnomes you guys are interested in making. We could paint them. We could paper piece them. I think I'd like to paper piece them. Um, just a heads up. Hi, Sherry. Welcome, welcome. In both Meet Your Creativity and in my community tab here on Facebook, I have put um, the JPEGs of the Kimbits that I put together and lines. So there's a page of... Four pages of lines and four pages of various Kimbit doodle things so that you've got choice to use um, whatever you're making. You're welcome to use it for what you're making or if you're selling. All I ask is that you don't share it with other crafters. And I'm only going to leave them up for a week and see if I can take them down. I'm not sure I can take them down, but I'll find out. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to do that for you guys who support me. And so there's bits to play with. So since we're going to do gnomes today, I want to clarify, do you want gnomes or do you want gonks? Gonks are the little people. They just have the nose and all the hair and the hat, sometimes boots. Gnomes actually have facial features. Which would you prefer? Anyone? Nobody talking? Okay, so I printed out this piece of Kimbits. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this to make the first one. I don't have an image of both. I'll make one of each, though. That's that's not a problem. So I'm going to cut out the black one because they're going to have black shoes, these ones that I'm doing at this moment. Um, deciding which I want to use for the hats. The hat on. I'm going to do one at a time. I'll do a gonk first, and then I'll do a gnome. Uh, how about if I take this pink one, and that's what I'll use for the nose and the face for both of them. Just in case you guys want to try this after, if you print out this sheet. I just printed it on copy paper, so the colors are pretty bland, nice and pastel -y. But they all have marks on so that they can be used Okay, the real difference is, like I say, the gnomes have their facial features showing. The gonks do not. Gonks are more Christmas-related than gnomes, norm, gnome, but they're both, in the folklore, they're pretty much the same. It's just that one is depicted with a face and one is pictured without. And gonks are usually more around Christmas time, I believe. Okay, so we've got a nose, we've got that. I'm just going to use white paper for the beard. And what do we want for a hat? Let's use this green for the hat. Yeah. I knew that there was a difference too. I just didn't, you know, really look it up. But, you know, just in case somebody decides to come and comment later that there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, we know there's a difference, right? <laughs> so we're doing gonk. 
So I'm going to use this for a nose. Um, I'm just going to cut a little piece of that off for the nose. This is going to be boots. So I want to trim it along the black. And again, I'm, I'm just, this is the way I do things. You guys don't have to do it this way. So I've got this left over. I'll use that for the face of the other gnome. For the gnome. And this is going to be the hat for this gunk. And I'm not going to cut the hat until last because we want it to fit the head. We don't want it too big. So let's start with the little piece for the boots. We're going to fold it in half. Surprise! <laughs> and we're just going to cut out two boots. Um, you know what? I think I only need half that. We're just going to do half rounds for the boots. Half circles. We're not going to care about the fold. We're just doing them so that they match. So those are going to be their boots, this guy's boots. So we've got boots. And let's cut out a nose. So I'm going to cut that one in half as well. And I'm going to cut out more like an ovally shaped nose. I'm going to try anyway. So what I'll do is I'll fold that one in half. Yeah, no, I'd seen gonks somewhere and I went, oh, those are the cutest things ever. And, you know, looking at gnome pictures, they've got all these things that look like gonks. So, okay, so I've got a little pink nose. That's going to be the hat. Let's cut out a beard. Gonk is G-O-N-K. So we want a beard kind of thing. So I just cut, you know, hunk of white paper. And I'm not too concerned that it's symmetrical because it is a beard and a mustache. So I'm just going to go like this, round the top, and back down. So I'm going to put the nose on this. And it's got to go right at the very top of the beard. The reason being is the beard and the mustache. Did you find it? Gonk versus gnome? So the nose would go right at the very top. But before I do that, let's put some markings on the beard. So if you've got a blue pencil crayon or a blue pen or whatever, you can use gray. So you know that the nose is going to be at the top. So we've got a mustache coming down. Oh, look, the pencil lead broke. <laughs> Can't show you with a broken pencil lead. Um, let me just find another one. Okay, this is a gray. So we know the nose is going to be there. So the mustache... We want to come like this, possibly, you know. So then we're just going to draw some lines to give it, you know, a bit of flow. And then because this is right under the nose, there's going to be a bit of a shadow. So we're going to do some thicker line around under the nose. And then this one, too, is just going to flow down. And then we're just going to shade underneath where the mustache and beard meet kind of looks like a hairdo doesn't it and you do as many lines as you want of course just re you know just like you so does that make sense to you guys hey don welcome welcome So right now we're making a gonk and then we'll make a gnome, Don, because there's a difference between gnomes and gonks. So now we can see that we don't need such a big piece 
for the hat. So I'm going to trim the hat here. I'm going to just use that part for the hat. And this can go in the other pile. So the hat has, it's around. We cut out a semicircle because it goes over here, right? And then we're going to cut it into a wobbly triangle. And it doesn't have to be straight. Now we're going to glue that down. The reason I'm doing a gonk first, Dawn, is because gonks don't have faces. Gnomes have faces. Gonks just have a nose. So now we've got a beard and a hat. How are you today, Dawn? How's your hand? Are you feeling better now? Are you able to play? Yeah, it's all hair. <laughs> then we take the nose and we stick the nose so that it's just a little bit above the hat and on the hair. Can we see that? Yay. I'm glad you can play. So now we're going to take these boots and we're going to take a white marker. If you have a white marker, if not, that's fine too. And I'm just going to draw a line where the sole would be. Let's use the thicker white gel pen. Just to show that there's, it's got a bit of sole, this here gonk. No, gnomes have full facial features. Hi, Beth. Welcome, welcome. Gnomes has have full facial features. Gonk only have a nose sticking out. So we're going to put these boots so that they're kind of peeking out behind the uh, beard. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue down. How are you, Beth? We're doing gonks and gnomes today, Beth. And I've glued that one down to my paper. I don't want that glued to the paper. I want it glued to this paper. Um, make sense nose boots and then of course you know you could put pants on them so i'm just going to take this green and i'm going to turn it into just like a little pair of pants underneath just take a piece of it not just a hat it doesn't have to have any real definition. It just has to look like pants underneath. I will trim. I'm going to have it there. So it looks like pants. So I'm just going to trim around the beard on this side. Just so it's not showing. <laughs> well, no, Google hasn't been lying to you specifically. I just needed clarification for myself, the difference between gnomes and gonks, because I was selling um, I didn't want to sell Gnomes is, you know what I mean. It, it just, I needed clarification for my own doing. Okay, so he's got little pants behind. It's just a rectangle, but it looks like he's got a pair of pants on. 
They don't have to have hands. They can have hands. Oh, I'm glad you're good, Beth. Okay, so I could consider this gonk done, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take the gray and I am going to put the shadowing under the hat. I'm going to add a little bit more underneath the mustache because it's not showing quite as well as I wanted it to. And definitely under the nose. The bottom of the hat. And then it's still, the glue's still wet, but I will come back and add some shadowing down there. So the nose, I'm going to outline just with a black gel pen. And I'm going to put an outline at the edge of the hat as well. Now, what you can do is just do a secondary line just above the edge. Because typically gonks have... Hi, Barbara. Welcome, welcome. Have knit caps. So then I'm just going to draw some lines so that it looks like it's got uh, ribbing at the bottom of the hat. And so, of course, it looks like it's kind of folded in here. So I'm going to put a couple of folds like this. Gives the hat a bit of definition. <laughs> Amazing Race TV program. See, Beth is asking too. A gonk is a gnome, but the difference between them is gonks don't have eyes. Gnomes have faces. Because I know somebody out there is going to call me on it. They're both from Scandinavian folklore. But yeah, gonks, gonks have faces and gnomes do. No, gonks don't have faces and gnomes do. So confusing. I think I'm gonna put just a little bit of white at the top of his nose, also for highlight. And probably down the center of the hat so it looks like it's so those of you who have just come in I have provided some of my line papers and Kimbit papers on both my meet your creativity channel and my community channel here <laughs> Yeah, you know, because I saw these guys and I thought those are so cute because you don't have to do faces and I fell in love with them, but I always knew them as gonks. And then when Belinda was asking if I did gnomes as well, it's like, actually, I do gonks. I haven't really done gnomes. So I had to look to see what the difference was and... I do gonks. They don't have faces. <laughs> and I'm just going to take this gray and I'm just going to kind of go around the edge of the hat just to give it a little bit more depth. So I would consider this here gonk done. Very simple. Hunk of beard, nose, hat, boots. No, you're not the only one. So there we have a gonk. Okay, let's do a gnome. So I'm going to use this as the face of the gnome. I'm just going to cut it into a roundish shape. So that's going to be... Yeah, I know that. That's like, I was doing something and somebody asked what I was making for supper. 
I was I was at a, a craft show or something. And I said, well, I'm making shepherd's pie. And they go, oh, you eat lamb? And I says, no, I'm making it with ground beef. And they corrected me and said, hey, Dana, welcome, welcome. They corrected me and said, no, that's a cottage pie. Shepherd's pie is made with lamb. And that's what they made because they had mutton, right? So when you use beef or chicken or anything else, that's considered a cottage pie. pie. I never knew that either. So now I still say shepherd's pie when in effect it's actually a... <laughs> am I confusing you guys as much as I am confused today? You're welcome. <laughs> so we've got gnomes and gonks and shepherd's pie and cottage pie. There, my education of the day. Or so I've been told. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one best, Dawn. That's like when I make lazy man holop tea, right? But it doesn't necessarily have a crust, Beth. So is it a pie? See, I don't know these things. I, everything's so confusing. Yeah, cottage versus shepherd's pie. I had no clue about that either. I think a lot of it has to do with where you're located in the world. Poor man's gravy, is that with, if you do bacon or sausages and you make a Gravy out of the dipping. Oh, yeah. With hamburger. Yeah. Maybe it's made by shepherds in a cottage. I'm not. I'm not too sure. Okay. So we've got this guy. Now we've got a face. We need eyes. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take two eyes out of this. Dried beef. I don't know if it's necessarily dried beef. I'm looking for O's. I think I'll cut out these two O's, these gray ones here. Do my cheater eyes again, guys. Doing cheater eyes. Yeah, quite often, if, if I pan fry burgers, I will make a gravy out of that. Like if we're having Salisbury steak, now is Salisbury steak a piece of really minced beef or is it ground beef shaped into a patty? I use ground beef shaped into a patty. I have one eye. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys use when you make Salisbury steaks? Do you make Salisbury steaks? To me, a Salisbury steak is ground beef with a little bit of seasoning, no eggs, nothing, shaped into a patty and pan fried. Okay, so I'm going to use those as my eyes. I'm going to glue them down. So a Salisbury steak to you is you take like a, a tougher piece of steak and it goes through the min mincing machine and it gets full of pounded and, yeah, and a mushroom gravy. I lost an eye. After all that. Um, yeah, no, it, I I get it. it. It's it's confusing both ways to me. Okay, lost an eye. So you know what? I'm going to put sunglasses on this dude. Those are big. 
No. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on how it's prepared, Belinda. You just make pad thai? I'm, I would probably love Thai food, but I'm allergic to peanuts and they use a lot of peanut oils in Thai food. So I'm leery about them. But I love curries and things. I don't know if those are going to be too big for sunglasses either. They could be fun. They could be fun, though. I'm going to glue them onto this piece of black and then cut around it. Yeah, if I made it myself, there would be no peanuts or peanut oil. For sure. Glue. Use olive oil. I might use sesame oil as an alternative. But very sparingly because sesame oil has such a strong flavor. I'm just turning these glasses into sunglasses. No peanut oil in yours? Maybe even coconut oil, because it doesn't have quite as strong a flavor. So what else goes into Pad Thai? Look, there's the other eye after all that. It's okay. He's got sunglasses now. Yeah, I use coconut oil quite often. Okay, so I'm going to cut these sunglasses out. Oh, I'm making a big mess. They're going to be very thin-rimmed sunglasses, but that's okay. Yeah, I use coconut oil quite often now. I even use it on my popcorn instead of butter when I'm putting seasonings on. Yeah, I've got some cool sunglasses. I've got glue smudge on that. So I'm just going to take a black marker and color them in. No, I seldom use vegetable oil like anymore. I'm just covering up the glue smudges with this marker. got nice bright pink sunglasses so we need a nose I'm going to use a different pink for the nose and I'm just gonna hand draw the mouth on I love bean sprouts not a fan of cilantro no Coconut oil would not be good for you. So I'm going to use this to make a nose. So I'm using this huge piece of paper, pink gel print for that size for the nose. <laughs> you know how that goes. Um, I think I'm going to do just as round a nose as I can because we all know I'm going to freehand cut this and it's going to be what it's going to be. And I'm going to outline it in black and the sunglasses in black.
So it doesn't have ginger or anything in it, Don. I've stayed away from Thai food because of the peanut oil and peanuts. So I'm not exactly sure. No ginger? Okay. I'm just outlining the nose in black. I put ginger in lots of things too. I love ginger. Okay, so we've got this and the nose. And we need a little mouth. Something I'm gonna draw the mouth on. But first we're gonna start with the hair. So I need some for hair for the head and some for the mustache and beard. So I'm going to cut a V in this piece because it's going to go under the nose so that we can see the mouth. Could I use almond butter instead of peanut butter for the sauce? And I'm going to glue this big rectangular piece of paper down onto the face. And the reason being I'm doing it this way is because I will cut it down to what I want it to look like after. Because I can eat almond butter. So I will trim this into the beard and mustache shortly. But first, I want to put the mouth in. So I'm going to take a red marker. This is a Stadler uh, Triplus Fine Liner. Heads up. This is water-based. It is not a permanent marker. It's very disappointing to find out if you're using it on... on anything quite big. So I'm just putting a little mouth on there because I can. And then this is going to be the hair. So it needs to go around the head. Like this. So that you've got a fair bit of face showing now, but once the glasses and stuff are on, you're not going to see it. So I'm just going to put some glue around this part, the rounded part to stick it onto the head. If you were just putting eyes on, you could use like Google eyes. You could use... Oh, you don't have to put sunglasses on. I'm putting sunglasses on because I thought it would be cute. So this hair, I'm going to have to put some more white behind. But I'm going to wobble cut it. Surprise. And then this is going to go underneath. I know that this is a backwards way of doing it. Oh, and a scrambled egg. Okay. You know what? I'm just thinking he's going to have curly hair and a long beard and mustache. So I'm going to trim this into a mustache first. And I'm just going to go down and up. Like that. And yes, it's got sharp points, but that's going to be covered by the nose and the glasses anyway. So I've got this wonderful big mustache. We'll just trim it in a little. 
on both sides. And then we're going to do the beard. And it can have curls out. Backwards, not thinking. I'm thinking as I go. <laughs> that doesn't surprise you, I'm sure. So I have a wonky wild beard and a mustache. So let's draw this mustache in. That's going to be the mustache to there. It's going to be under the nose. And then the beard again is going to have dark where it starts. And also the long lines down. If you use blue, it's also works and then the hair i'm just going to do curls and do you have that over rice then Don, do you have that over rice? So I've got curly hair and a wild beard. Now we're going to put the sunglasses on first. Do you use rice as well with that then? Oh, your car look sir. And where did I put the nose? The nose, the nose. Now we need a hat for this guy. And again, some pants. Rice noodles, okay. What kind of hat do we want? Hat, hat, hat. How about this fun purple would make a nice hat, I think. So this hat, I think I want it to go into really nice curly point. Oh, like that. And again, we have to cut the little arch in it. It's a little wide at the bottom. I can just trim that down. I like that little hat. That's good. Yeah, it will make a cute hat. A little bit of glue so that it sticks to the glasses and then a little glue behind so it sticks to the hair.
So again, I'm going to come in with my gel pen and outline everything. White gel pen across the top of the nose. Again, you know, if we could add some some lines to show that it's got some folds in the fabric. So you just do a little curved line and at the side just do it like a little angle thing okay blue dragon medium race noodles okay i use race noodles if i'm making curry noodles Now, we need to figure out, are we going to have hands or no hands on this guy? Haven't decided. Let's do some pants. I don't have any more of that because I used it all for the hat. So, we've got some dude that doesn't match. I guess we could use these little bits for pant legs. I could get away with that. I'll just fold them together. My husband is not a fan of curry, so I usually only cook it when my kids and grandkids are here because they eat it. So what I did was I took that little piece of purple and I just cut out like two pant legs because I'm just going to stick them underneath. Like this. And then I'll put boots on. And I kind of want them like that. So then I'll put the pants down. A little bit of glue on them. And then I'll position the beard on top so that it's where I want it. Does that make sense? This guy's a little bit bigger than I wanted, but that's okay. So obviously now I'm going to have to have a jacket and he is going to have to have hands. I do more of an Indian curry. I make um, like an alu gobi, which is potatoes and cauliflower or potatoes and chickpeas. I can't remember what that one is called. But I know A-L-O-O -O is potato. But I, I, they've got a really nice, it's like a tomato-y based sauce with lots of seasonings. I just love that. Nice, Dawn. That's really nice. Okay, so we need some sort of a jacket thing. And since this is a purpley, does this match? This is close, so I'm going to use this to make like a little jacket. So we need shoulders. Am I giving anybody too blue dicky fits yet because of the way I do things? I'm sorry. Um, we'll want sleeves about that length. I think I'm just going to cut that right across. Okay. 
And then I'm going to put hands on the bottom of this. So this is going to taper in just a little bit on both sides. Hey, Shaz, welcome. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. We're making gnomes and gonks, and my gnome got way big out of hand compared to my gonk, but that's okay. So then I've got this little bit of pink left from the nose. No, that's not the one I used for the nose. I need this pink to do the hands. So again, I'm just going to take this whole piece of paper and cut out this much. Thanks, Jazz. And I'm going to make this into hands. So I'm going to cut it, fold it in half because this is the way I do everything, right? I'm going to have the fold on the left side. Now I have to think. Thumb to the inside. I've got to cut a thumb. And then a little bit of a wobble cut. And I've got hands. You know what? I'm really not sure, to be honest with you, Don. These guys are supposed to be more around Christmas time. Like if you look at any Scandinavian lore, even if you Google what's the difference between gonks and gnomes, it says that this guy's got a knit hat, but these guys are more, and they live in the house, even though they are keeper of forests and, and stuff as well. They do, you know, they like to have these in the house as good luck, actually. And these ones are a bit more mischievous, and they live outside. And aside from that, these guys have faces, and these guys just have a nose. So gonks, nose only. Gnomes, full body, everything. So if it's going to go like this, you know what? I think I still want to shorten that just a bit. I'm going to cut this like this. You know, this is the way I do things. So I'm going to bring that in just a little bit more. And of course, I could have brought, you know what, let's do that. Let's just cut this all the way like this. So it's more like a little shirt. See, it's got... <laughs> yeah, gnomes... Like... I fell in love with these little guys and I always knew them as gonks. And then I saw people doing these as gnomes and I thought, wait, they're gonks. So I had to look and these are gonks. Gnomes have faces. Ugh. So, you know... So now, oh, see, I didn't do it quite large enough. I was hoping that I could pull these out the front that I can have one out front, one on top of the, and that one behind. If I trim this just a bit. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this like this, but I'm not gluing this side down. I'm going to see if I can cut it and bring that arm over as well. If that makes sense to anybody other than me, thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if, if you, you know, 
are interested in checking out the difference between gonks and gnomes, you can Google that. I wonder if on Pinterest it would have the difference too. I don't know. I think I need, what do I, how do I bring you forward a little? I have to trim that. I have to make a hole. This is going to be one of those things. Don't look at the back. Kind of like my slow stitching. Please don't look at the back of my slow stitching. Look, I did it. So now I'm going to take these two little hands I did, and I'm going to glue them on. Yeah. So Scandinavian and Nordic. Okay. <laughs> Is it anything like a troll? I don't know. Oh, look, he's got long arms. That's okay. It's okay. So now he's got hands. I want to define this mouth a little bit more. He's getting there, guys. He's getting there. <laughs> I'm just adding a little bit of detail. So it kind of looks like he's got fingers. Boots. We need boots for this guy, too. Got this piece. Those will make big enough boots. Yeah, hobgoblins and children's stories. Yeah, I've heard that, too. And in some of the fantasy I read, there's hobgoblins, but I'm not sure exactly what they are. So I'm just doing half rounds again for boots. <laughs> yeah. Invite that those their gonks in. So we've got boots. So I didn't really explain what I was doing as I was going. I just kind of did. I'm sorry. I can explain shortly. So let's just add some shadowing under this beard. The bottom of the sleeves, under the hat, under the glasses. This is just a gray Crayola, cool gray pencil crayon. Uh, around the edge of the hat so that it looks like and then we could put a pom-pom on the hat if we want and then I'm going to take white and just scribble down the center of this hat but I'm going to do it in kind of uh, half circles so that it looks like it's curved, if that makes sense. And then the top, the very top is going to be lighter, so I have to 
now that I've got gray on it. Because I wasn't thinking. That gives it a little bit of definition. All right. That would be cute. Let's define these boots a little bit more. Uh, I want to find that mustache some more. He's coming together. Hi. Oh, thanks, Sherry. I think I want to do just like a... I'll have to use a gel pen for that. Oh, see? I didn't outline this beard on here. That's... I think what I need to do is go around the beard just on the top of it to give it a bit more definition, if that makes sense. Never profess to be 100% at this. I'm making it up as I go along because that's what I do. What do you think? Is he done? Should I put shoelaces on him, like a, a bow on top of his shoes? Oh, I need to put the mark where the sole of the shoe is. And I want that all black. Oh, thanks, Don. I'm going to outline this mustache with the black because it's just not showing clearly enough that there's actually a mustache as well. Should we put a pom-pom on the hat? Let's take a little piece of white and wobble cut a pom-pom. Let's do a fair size pom pom. I'm just wobble cutting a rough circle because if I tried to cut a circle, it wouldn't be a circle anyway. So I've just got a little white blob. I'm gonna glue it down at the point of his hat, her hat, I don't know. It's got pink sunglasses, not sure. Not sure, not sure. Let's put it on the front of the hat. I'm going to let that glue dry before I decorate that. I'm just going to do some little curly things on it. So that's how I do gnomes and gonks. He's got such a big shoulder. Maybe he needs a little bird. I think I want this to be a little bit more dark down here so that it shows that it's behind the shoe. Here too, a little bit of shadow underneath this beard. I guess I should glue the beard down a little bit better as well.
Yeah, pom-poms were invented so that when guys were wearing hard hats, if something landed on them, it protected their head. <laughs> You're welcome, Don. Is that why they were invented? Cool. Had to give him a little bit of an elbow in there. That arm was looking just flat. It's, it's really an awkward arm. <laughs> okay, so we got a pom-pom on the tip of this guy's hat. I'm just going to outline it with the black gel pen. Again, Bic. Bic. Gel. Delocity. Delocity gel pen. Bic. Delocity. 0.7. And we're just going to do some little curly things like this to show that it's a pom-pom. I would consider him done. Thoughts? Yeah. I guess I could put something in his hand that he's carrying something. But I think he's good. <laughs> the reason I know that is because I was making pom-poms and that just happened to come across my Facebook feed one day or something. A lollipop? Need to be holding a lollipop? I can make a lollipop. Lollipop, lollipop. Oh, look. I have these swirly things here. It's going to have a big pink lollipop. Not quite as big as that. I'll take it to this one. Let's circle right here. Does that look like a lollipop? Needs a stick. It's going to end up covering his beard. It's okay. And that goofy arm, maybe. What am I going to use for a stick? Let's outline that in black while I'm thinking of it. Black, black. Where's my outliner? Guess he could be carrying it kind of like a staff or something. How are we going to have this lollipop? I need brown something for a stick. Do, do, do. I had some brown paper aside from this. Want a bit thicker paper than this is why I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking. So again, those of you who are just popping in, what I have done is, with my lined paper that I make, yeah, over his shoulder, with the lined paper that I, I make, I copied, I did four sheets, and it's available in my community tab here, and also in Meet Your Creativity. All I ask is that you don't share it, but you can use it if you're selling your work or uh, just for your own personal use. There's four sheets. They're all different. And I also did four sheets of my doodle bits. I used those on this guy. Um, so there's four sheets, all different as well, of doodle bits. So that, you know, those who are just starting out and don't have access to lots of scrapbook paper and things. Yeah, I like the fact it, him carrying it over his shoulder. Almost like a baton. Maybe I'll have the stick from this hand. Oh, yeah. 
So it's a cross body stick across his, yes. Um, what do I want to use? What do I want to use? Anyway, the those bits also are on. Look, I have a little piece of cardboard way the heck over here. On my community tab and in my Facebook group. If anybody wants to use those, feel free. As I say, please just don't share them. I'm just going to cut a thin strip of this. So that we've got the lollipop stick. I'll glue that down. <laughs> Bye, Barbara. Thanks for coming. And if you want those line papers or stuff, like I say, they're both community tab because I know that you don't do Facebook. One of the sticks I used with the scarecrow arms, I have no idea where they are. But this will work. I can clap. Outline. And of course, I probably should have let, outlined all that stuff, but I did not. We'll just draw some, like. And some shadowing. And it's going to go from his hand over the beard up to that shoulder. Is that better? Does that help? I sound like you. Why? <laughs> you don't know where it is? Ah. I kind of like it. I'm going to stick that down. I always like it when you guys are here to play and, and say, no, try this or try that or, you know. Hey, Angela, welcome, welcome. Just made a gnome. Just kind of pieced them together. You know how I wing things. There's a, this guy's definitely a work in progress kind of thing. Just want to stick that beard down a little bit better. So we have a gnome, guys. Oh, yeah. I know that feeling. Hey, Tina. Welcome, welcome. Wings? Does he need wings? Should I put wings on him? I don't know. Let's see. Grab that white hunk of paper again. We're just playing add on, <laughs> add on bits. Okay, piece of white paper folded in half. I didn't fold it evenly because that's, you know, I don't do that. So we're going to have a wing, an upper wing. I think all we need are upper wings.
I don't know. They're a bit big. I think I have to make them smaller. Oh, no. I do that, too. I actually just posted something on my Facebook page about the law of putting things in a safe place and how you only find it once you've bought a replacement and then you have two. No, those, those have to come down much more, Kim. Much more like this. Like this. It is in the special place. I still can't find my marbles. I'll have you guys know. My marbles are still missing. Nope. Still too big. Oh, no. What do you think? Wings? Do we like them with wings or no? <laughs> Thanks, Belinda. No, I have no idea where the heck I put my marbles. It is making me crazy. And I have been cleaning up that side desk beside me because I was looking for the Costco flyer catalog thing because I wanted O's. I like them without two. So I've got the wings. Should I make another one with wings? Or let's try them on the gonk. Oh, the gonk could be cute with wings. <laughs> I don't know. Should I do another somebody? Hilarious on the gonk. <laughs> they could be fun. A fairy? Should I make a fairy? I could do a fairy. Fairy, and those are her wings? Make a fairy to fit the wings? Yeah, white is stark. But we can fix that. We can fix that. We can almost make it... I'm going to take this here orange pencil crayon. And I'm going to do a swirl like that. And like that. Like this. Does that help? So we've got a light orange with the pencil K on. Let's try a bit darker orange. And I'll just go over it. That's better. And I'm not going exactly over it so you get a little bit of shadowing of the yellowy orange. Better. And then, and then, and then, we can take this here orange marker. And I've got, I need to clean it. That's, that's close enough to clean. And one of these. 
So this is a Crayola Pip Squeaks marker. I'm just going to scribble down on this here piece of plastic. I'm going to dip this here in water. And I'm just going to treat it like a watercolor. Need more. It's wet. That's glue. More marker. I need more. Uh, I need something else plastic. That's not dirty. I have a clean one. That's better. Much better. Get away. Okay, so there's a bit of orange. What do you think? Are the wings better? And then what I could do is I have this here gold paint. And I'm going to go around the outside with a very fine brush, and those are going to be the wings. Back to this one, because this is a paint one. Just need a drop of gold. And I have this nice little brush. It is a no idea brush, because it's old and everything's worn off of it. So I'm just going to go around the outside with this gold so that it's just going to have a hint of sparkle in certain lights. Does that make sense? No idea brush, yeah, it's, well, you know how so many people, when they're doing things, people ask what they're using. So much of my stuff is so old, I can't even hazard a guess as to how long I've had it or what it's called. We'll call it Frank, I don't know, works for me. Okay. So we've got wings. And I don't know if you can see the shine of the gold a little bit here and there. No name brush. That works. I'll put it over there to dry. Now, I like making fairies. I am going to take... Doo -doo -doo -doo. I want something reasonably I'm going to use this it's a piece of book page you can still see the printing it's painted pink and then it's got a real messy purple stencil over it I like it no 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 I'm doing a fairy now We're doing a fairy now. So I'm cutting off a hunk of the book page. I'm folding it. Why are you laughing? <laughs> okay, I folded it in four. And I'm going to cut narrow to wide to narrow. Like that shape, like that shape. That's gonna be the skirt for the fairy.
So I'm going to outline all these in black. No, no, we're, we're, we're not doing, I'm totally, totally on a new kick here. I heard the word fairy and it's like stuck in my head now. I have to do a fairy. Because I can't stick to just one thing, you know. I'm getting carried away again. Nice. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I, I had my daughter come and help at times too. And when she cleaned, she threw out all my canning jars. And now I don't have them around helping me anymore because I don't trust them for what the heck they're going to throw out. A gonk is a gnome without a face. These are gonks. They're a type of gnome, sort of. They're related to gnomes, but they're not gnomes. Gnomes have faces. Gnomes have full faces. Gonks, gonks are just a nose with beards and stuff. Gnomes, gnomes are, well, at least she doesn't toss things. My daughters toss things. They're not allowed to play it and clean at my house anymore. So, so gnomes have full faces and gonks just have a nose. But I'm not putting the fairy wings on the gonk. I'm putting the fairy wings on the fairy. <laughs> Because I did the wings in orange and now I'm doing purple skirt. So I've got the four petals for the skirt. So I'm just going to put some glue at the top and kind of overlap them a little bit so that it forms a skirt, if that makes sense. Just a little bit down the side kind of thing. Just so that it's just enough for you to go through. Yeah, darn kids. So I've got two on top and two underneath. Does that make sense? Can you see how that's done? I've got, I cut four petals, splayed them out, outlined them. You're welcome, Angela. See, I fell in love with these guys and I knew them as gonks. And then I saw a whole bunch of people making gnomes like this and I had to find out. Gnomes have faces. All's good. All is good. So now we need a bodice for the dress. So I'm just going to take a hunk of that again and I'm going to fold it in half and I'm just going to make a heart shape. No, I haven't received it yet, Angela. You know, sometimes it takes about five weeks to get stuff from the States. But I will definitely let you know as soon as I get it. So now I've cut out a heart, and that's going to be the bodice of the dress. I'm going to outline it black. I know, it's crazy. There was one swap I was in. And it did. It took five weeks for the stuff to get here. So until five weeks have passed, I don't worry. <laughs> and you shouldn't either. Because I will definitely let you know as soon as I get it. Okay, so now we've got the heart. For the bodice of the dress... Quite often what I'll do is I'll just cut out a heart for the bottom of the dress too, a little bit bigger, and then a heart for the top. It just makes it easier, and it's kind of, it's very simple to do fairy clothes like this. 
Does that make sense? And then, of course, I'm going to come in with the white gel pen and I'm going to do some marks on that so that it's even harder to see the lettering. Does that make sense, folks? Now, for the arms, because I always like my fairies to have arms and a neck and head. I just have to find something I want to use. I wonder if I can get it out of this. You know what? I'm going to use this spot here. No, maybe this spot here. I'm going to use that spot there. There's method to my madness, ladies. Seriously, there is. Welcome back, Beth. I finished my gnome. And you saw the gonk. Now I'm working on a fairy because they said wings and we didn't like them on either the gonk or the gnome. So I'm making a fairy to go with the wings. So I've got a piece. This is probably what? Two and a half inches wide. But so it's roughly two and a half by two and a half. So this is the way <laughs> it's folded in half. You guys know I do this. So we're going to cut a head. A neck. Shoulders. So you've got kind of like that head's not round. It's got to be much smaller. That's okay. It's a fairy. Okay, so you've got like a heart with this. So that she'll be behind the dress like that. Now I'm going to fold it back in half. And I'm going to cut this part of the fold. And like that. A whale's tail? Yeah. So now we've got this. A heart cut out of the middle of this heart bottom part. So that when we've got it, these hands can come in front and be holding something. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. Okay. So now I am going to glue the dress onto the body, just this part here, and glue it down. And kind of center it. It's a fairy. It doesn't have to be exact. These are going to be her wings. I think maybe what I'll do now is the next color I put on the wings is going to be a pink so it, or a purple so it ties in a little bit better. So now I can have her holding a bouquet of flowers, a basket, one big flower, whatever. So I've got this color. I'm just going to cut some legs. Uh, I'm just going to cut down here. Just a rectangle. Long, skinny rectangle. Purple? Okay, I'll put purple on that. So I've got this long, thin rectangle. I am going to fold it in half. 
Because we know this is what Kim does. So I am going to do kind of like little pointed feet. I cut it backwards. Okay, we'll start again. Because I have to go from this side. Little pointed feet. Unfold, unfold. So she's kind of pigeon toed. I like pigeon toed fairies. Hey, Pam, welcome, welcome. And I'm just going to go a little bit higher up some knees, and we'll give her a little bit thicker thighs. And I'm just going to round this foot off a little bit more. So I did it. I cut so that the fold was still there. And I just kind of did a knock knee kind of fairy. You could do the leg separately. I'm not overly concerned. She's got little legs compared to her body and stuff. That's okay. Who's to know what size a fairy actually is? I'm just going to put some glue at the top and glue it down under the dress. She's got wide shoulders, but that's okay. That is okay. Now, we need to put a face on this lady. And we have to decide what she's carrying. But before I do that, let's add some purple to this. Let's find a purple marker, a purple marker. I have a purple Crayola marker. So again, I'm going to take it and scribble on the lid. Remember, it's just a Crayola marker. And I had a Q-tip. I did. I had a Q-tip and it went someplace on my desk. You guys can probably see it, and I cannot, but that's okay. I'll just take another one, because I can. I'll find it when I'm cleaning. Dip the Q-tip in the water. Smush it around. We're going to add purple to these wings now. The pencil crayon's acting like a resist. But we want it kind of a little bit paler, so we'll just go over it again. Wash it out just a little bit more. Why are you giggling, Tina? Because you can see the mark, the Q tip, and I can't. You're going, that looks like a mess, Kim. Just wait, just wait. Okay. Let's put a face on this lady. She's got a really thick neck, too. Let's give her a necklace. We'll just give her some beads. A little necklace. And for that, we're going to take... Let's use just a bit of white paint. You don't see the other Q-tip either? No. No. It's here someplace. I'm, I'm sure it is. I didn't throw it out. A little bit of white paint that's just... Crafter's acrylic paint. And I'm going to take a toothpick. I'm going to trim this glue off the end of it. So that I can just fill in these beads around her neck. Oh, I smudged that one. It's okay. And we can also do a little bit of dots around the bodice of her dress. You know, now we're getting a little decorative here, which is fine. It's a fairy. She's got to be kind of pretty, right? 
Now we're going to have to do eyes. So again, I'm just using the Q-tip. No, it's not a Q-tip. That's a toothpick. Yeah, I did use it earlier for the wings. No, no, because she flies, Tina. She flies. We're going to do eyes. Got to give this lady some hair. Must give her some hair. And who's to say fairies don't have skinny legs like this? I mean, I can trim her arms down too and make them skinnier. We'll see. We'll see. We've got eyes. What am I going to use for hair? Um, how about... I've got orange, 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 orange. Do I have some orange kicking around? What about this stuff over here? These are the doodle bits. I'm going to use this orange for the hair. What kind of hair does she have? She can have like a ponytail kind of thing. So I'm just going to chop off this piece and it's going to go like this and a swoopy ponytail. It's got to be a little bit wider. Did cut it wide enough? So maybe I'll just go like this. I have to trim her head down. This is what happens. I have to trim her head down just a little bit. But that's okay. She's like that guy from that sings Figaro on Bugs Bunny cartoons. Little head, big body, little legs to go doodle -doo -doo -doo, right. Yeah, that's better. I'm gonna glue this down. That's okay, Angela. We're just playing. I'm just playing. So she's got a ponytail that goes that way. Now I'm kind of wondering, though, if I should have some more on this side going down behind. You know what I mean? Like, might as well give her a funky hairstyle because I can. Something like that. Hair like that. Or leave this one off and just hair off one side. Behind as well? Okay. I am not a hairdresser by any means. <laughs> They're going, no kidding. We'll make her beautiful. It's okay. We've only just begun. We have to wait for the eyes to dry. Um, should she have a bouquet of flowers? Should she be holding a bouquet? I gotta do something more with these wings. I have to add some more purple. I think I have to do a whole thing in purple, actually. No, nope, purple's over here. The whole thing in purple, and then we'll go back and highlight that orange this side, Kim. This one.
No, that's the paint. This is the marker. Confusing myself. And I know that's not hard because I still haven't found my marbles, as you guys know. All right. So then when that's dry, I am going to use an orange marker and I am going to go over those swirlies again. Yeah. Gotta go pee. Help, help. I'm going to give her a little bouquet of flowers. So I need a little bit of green, just a tiny bit of green. Look, I've got green from the gunk. A little bit of green. I'm just going to fold that up. <laughs> you didn't want to say it? That's okay. And I'm just going to cut leaves out of this little bit of green. That gives me four leaves. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some glue down on here so I can put the leaves down using a toothpick. Look, a piece of paper. It can go in the garbage. I'm just going to pick it up. Glue it. Oh, they're together, kind of. Okay, then I'm going to glue them both. And again, this is, we'll do it kind of the way I do my floral cards. Yeah, the tiny details. I like tiny details. I'm all about the tiny details. I have glue on my fingers, so things are sticking to me. But alas, I don't have my... Q-tip. Oh, I didn't glue the arms down. I should do that first. Let's just stick that down with some glue. This one too. Okay, I got four leaves. Let's do some more leaves. Another little batch of leaves. The curved metal thing to my left. Well, that's a very good question. I was sitting and eating lunch and my husband goes, what can you do with this? <laughs> so this was a guide for a, an ancient table saw that was my dad's. The saw is long gone, defunct, and he had this. So it's got the uh, angles, and it's from a deluxe saw. And I thought that would make an absolutely great rubbing. But I also really like this shape here. Because it's almost like a big clown smile. But I'm thinking if I had this kind of shape, I could use it as banners and things or something. So, but definitely, I think I'd like to do a rubbing with this. I'm, I'm, that's why it's sitting here because I plan on doing a rubbing. That's just a piece of white. Go away. Got a little bit more green. Just going to trim that. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've got a lot of my dad's old tools. And it's really nice. That, you know, we, we have this and we can share stuff with our kids. You know, like the kids have learned a lot of tool history because some of it was my grandfather's and, yeah, it's, you know, we have stuff. Okay, so I just cut out another set of leaves, four leaves, but I'm not going to use them all because I want an odd number because we know that's what I like. So again, I'm just going to take a little piece of glue, a little bit of glue, separate them, maybe. Come on. 
doesn't want to separate nice. Yeah, my husband has a lot of his, you know, like my grandfather's tools and my dad's tools up on the wall in his shop. Another piece here, and we'll just put one more. Waiting for her eyes to dry so I can work on her face. She's very red in the face. <laughs> not sure if she's going to end up with glasses or not. We'll find out. Okay, so I've got the leaves for her bouquet. Let's outline. Did I just make somebody seasick? Sorry. I'm going to outline them and make them look like leaves. Sort of. Not going to go into a whole lot of detail yet. But it's a start because I don't know how much I'm going to cover. If that makes sense to you. So now I think what I'd like to do is I would like to do almost like a ribbon. Yeah, let's paint a little ribbon on. Where's that little brush? Right here. Let's do a dark, I don't have purples. Do I have a purple here? Let me just look. Look, I do have a purple. Yeah, a little bow, but trailing ribbons. Might do a little bit to this too. We'll see. No, I was going to put more orange on that. More orange on this, but we'll do a little bow. And let's have some trailing ribbons down. Oh, look, that's the purple that I used on that paper. So the ribbon needs to have white. Let's put some white on that ribbon. Let's give it a highlight. I don't know how well you guys can see the bow. I probably could have done it out of paper. But it's okay. So I need that to dry. Then we have to decide on what kind of flowers. Am I going to do paper flowers? Or am I going to do... Some other sort of flowers. Am I going to paint the flowers on? Nope. I think I want paper flowers. Those are pretty fun wings. That was just an orange Sharpie marker. I like the way the wings have turned out now. Okay. So. Are the eyes dry? That isn't dry. Are the eyes dry? The eyes are dry. All right. So I'm going to take this black gel pen. Again, Bic Velocity pen. And I'm going to trace the eyes. And I'm going to go in with a... Uh, Aqua green for the pupils. Oh, look, the paint wasn't dry. 
It's okay. And then we need pupils. And some eyelashes. And we have to outline the hair and the head. Let's go back around those beads. Around her neck. Uh, nose. And yeah, I know one eye is bigger than the other. I, I'm not good at getting things to match, but that's okay. I'm going to make some curls like this for the hair. And curls like that for the hair. Just some waves. Yeah, the wings have improved. And a little red mouth. Let's take a red marker and we'll just give her a little red mouth. And then again, I'm going to come with the gel pen and I'm just going to enhance it just a little bit. Oh, look, we should give her a nice big white earring over there. Take the toothpick. We're going to give her earring down this side. To match the necklace. Lips. She's got lips. Okay. So, as soon as this bow is dry, I'm going to outline it. While we're doing that, let's look for some flowers that we could use. I'm going to just use what I've got. I'm not going to make any today. You know what? I might even stick a couple of these leaves on. Because I've got those leaves. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, let's find a flower. Some nice flowers. Let's choose. If you see a flower you like, any of these, because you still have to see the ribbon. I think that's a bit big. So I don't like any of those back in the bin. This, this. The one below yellow. This one? This one? Low yellow. Got a couple of those. It'd be nice to have three. Got little yellow that I can do, like I had it first. This one? Oh, first.
I'll put them back on my hand and I'll wait for you to say yes or no. This one? Near my ring. This was near my ring. This one? Nope. Not that one? Nope. You guys are going to be frustrated with this one? This one? This one? That one? Yes? Okay. I've got two. Let's see if I've got a third one because then we can do a nice little cluster. And if not, we can do one and then find... Oh, this is pretty, but it would be too matchy-matchy. I like those too. Like that. I need one like that. That's too big. Way too big. Whoa, get out of there. Get out, get out. Okay. You grasses, just get in the bin. You're annoying. No big grasses like that in this one. Oh, it's kind of cute. Is that too big? I think so. We need like these little guys. It'd be nice to find. Okay, I got three of those. They're very similar to that color though. So those ones. We're going to use this one. That's going to be the main flower. It needs a bit of a punch to it, though, guys. You know what? I really like this one. Tiny ones. Well... You know what I'm going to end up doing, right? I've got these little yellow ones, these little yellow hole punches. There's a whole bunch of them. That's what's going to be the flowers. Oh, look, I got little blue ones too. Got some blue ones. How many blue ones do I have? I'm sorry, I'm boring, you guys. I'm rushing, I'm hurrying. Come on, what's on the other side of you? Nothing. Don't know why I have white hole punches. I don't use them. Oh, oh, another hole punch. What are you? There's a pink one. Are you guys thoroughly frustrated with me yet? I'm sorry. You're obsessed with purple? Purple is a lovely color. Oh, look. That's the purple one. It's not the other one. <laughs> All right. There's that one, and then I'm just going to do a whole bunch of these little ones. I can always do more hole punches. What about these ones? Like, no, those are too close to the main one in color. And they kind of blend into that skirt. Come on, get in the bin. I think I need a bigger bin. Good thing that I uh, glue them flat, right? Oh, 
Okay, just go away. So I'm going to glue these ones down, these three. That's the white paint. This is the glue. Hey, Trey, how are you doing? Was he here? One there, like that. See those bottom ones? I didn't over embellish them and they're getting hidden anyway. So, all right, we've got those down. So, before I go any further, I'm going to outline this stuff with black just to give it the depth we need. Just helps punch it out that little bit. And again, I'm going to take this gray pencil crown and I'm just going to give her a bit of shadow on her legs to show that the skirt, you know, stuff is behind and over okay now this flower i have to outline in black so it'll punch out that little bit baby's breath baby's breath yes definitely i'll do baby's breath That's outlined. Let's glue that down. It's weird. It's a perfect circle. Like I didn't wobble cut it. That's a punch. I punched that one. That is very weird. Very weird. So it's going to go there. Then I'm going to take these three little yellow ones. I'm going to put them over here. I will embellish these yellow hole punches for anybody who's wondering. And then I've got these two blue ones. I know I don't normally do things in even numbers, but today it's Oh, that doesn't even show on there. No, you can't go on. Get off. Now that I've got glue on it, doesn't want to leave me. It's attached. Go away. Stay. If you ever put tape on the on your baby's fingers, watch them try to get the piece of tape off because it's annoying. That's what that flower was to me just now. You went and got paper punches today. That's right, you were doing um, sunglasses. Are we going to put sunglasses on her or just glasses? I think she could have just glasses. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. I'll put baby's breath on. We'll decorate these yellow ones. Let's outline this one first. Depth, Kim, do the depth. So even though I did the little centers in the yellow flowers, oh, I thought you were making glasses. Um, I'm going to put just a little bit 
of color on those. I'm just going to take this orange pencil and I'm just going to draw a circle around them. All it does is gives a little hint, little hint of color. We need the wings on. I'm going to outline them in black. I thought you bought, okay, I thought your hole punch broke yesterday. Yeah, that ribbon needs to pop a little bit more too. I think that's a good placement for her wings. Let's glue those down. Let's use the glue. Punches are expensive. Glue that down. Let's use this. Okay, so I need a crook in the elbow, kind of. We need to outline this shoulder. I think she needs a bow in her hair. No, I don't think punches have a long life. I think I want to put a bow in her hair. And I still have to put baby's breath on. And I need to do something about this ribbon because let's use the white outline gel pen. Oh, Kim, wash that. This ribbon definitely needs something. Because it's just not punchy enough for me. Oh, see that flower isn't outlined. I can see that. Now we're going to get my ugly brush. I have an ugly brush right here. A flower in her hair. I can definitely put a flower in her hair. Let's just deal with this ugly brush first. Get some white. Do some baby's breath. Yeah, the ribbon really gets lost. I think I might want to do it in a different color. Get some baby's breath on it. Flower in her hair. Um, big flower? No, too big. Let's dump them out again. How about this one? Is that too big? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I like the, the ugly brushes because seriously, when you're doing like something like baby's breath, 
you can just dip it in, dip, tap it off, and, and just, it makes nice, light little marks for baby's breath. That one's too big, right? Which means that one would be too big. Um, oh, glasses. Let's see if we want glasses first. You can always embellish the wings a little bit more as well. Oh, look, these are all my big glasses. I've got one pair of little glasses. Too big. Uh, where's my bin of glasses? I'll make some. I'll make some. If you want purple glasses. Purple, purple. Let's grab a piece of purple something. Purple. Need a piece of purple paper. Papa, papa, purple. Um, well, Shaz, to be honest, at least I didn't enable you to spend money. <laughs> I'm looking on the bright side here, trying to not to get into trouble. Look on the bright side. Okay, now yeah, she definitely needs something in her hair. Maybe a like you say, a flower. Like this. So it's behind. I'm, I'm looking on the bright side so I'm not getting in trouble with somebody's husband. I mean, on Tuesday, no, Friday, I baked bread and I didn't have cornmeal to put down on parchment paper that I was baking it on. So the parchment paper, the bread left these wonderful funky marks and it's got such a nice crinkle. I washed it. I put it out on the deck to dry. And, of course, that's when my husband came in and went, why is there a piece of paper out on the deck? I said, well, <laughs> but look at the texture. Seriously. And it's got that crinkle. So, you know, I, I can't say anything. We're not spending money, ladies. We are not spending money. We're just doing what we're doing. I really need a piece of purple. I need a piece of purple. Oh, I'll be right back. I think I know where I've got some. I know I've got some. Okay, no purple glasses. You can have or I draw them on. I can paint them on. Why don't I just paint them on, guys? I don't have to paper piece them on. I can just paint them. I think that would take away from it, though. Gray pencil. Give it some shadow around the hair. Oh, and the earrings. Got it. Do the earrings. It's got nice earrings. Um, well, I couldn't find my purple paper. What else? Orange? Nope. Because she's got orange hair. Yellow? Yeah. I love crinkly pages. There's just something about it. Definitely something about it. It's 
give some shadowing here so that those nice big shoulders. She's an Amazon fairy. Very statuesque. Yeah, yeah, body proportions are way off. We understand these things. Well, I understand these things. Oh, she doesn't have a chin. That's what looks weird. Didn't give the poor lady a chin. There we go. Much better. All right. She still needs something in her hair and she needs glasses. What about... This totally doesn't match blessed thing on her. I can't find something. I I am so sorry, guys. How about this? No, no. Well, it kind of matches. Let's see. Let's just do the glasses and figure it out. Let's just do the glasses. And figure it out. Piece of paper. Fold it in half. Take your whole punch. Punch the holes. That oh, might be too wide too. Oh, we'll find out. Cut around the holes. A little heavy in the middle. I can trim that down. No. This is this is just a regular hole punch. It is a made in China. I don't know. Got it at Michael's. It's just like a regular hole punch punch. I like those glasses. I had them. Right there. Yes, no. <laughs> I got two yeses and one no. Different color. Yellow, I can do yellow. I can do yellow. Let's try yellow. Let's not let's not give up yet. Let's not give up yet. We're good. We're good. All is good. Let me 
get them in place. I think they're a little heavy on the outside. I'll trim them a bit. And then I think I will go with these. Yeah, I like them better. I'm going to put some glue on them and glue them down. And then we can embellish them a little bit. I think we are ready to do the last bits of embellishment. Maybe the bow in the hair or a flower in the hair. <laughs> well, I do have a yellow that matches the flower punch outs someplace. <laughs> so let's outline them. Okay, so what do we need yet? Do we need more flowers? Do we need maybe some... I really don't like that bow. It really just gets lost. And do we want a little flower in her hair? flower for her hair. Yeah, me too, Shaz. It, yeah, that yellow's with my marbles, wherever they may be. I don't know. They're probably in plain sight, which is the really, really worst thing, right? Okay, so let's embellish these a little bit by outlining things with black. She has the glasses, yeah, and an earring, and a necklace. Do you think I should outline the orange on the wings with black? <laughs> and your plot. <laughs> No. Okay. No embellishing the wings with that. What about with white? Yes? Okay. Let's see what the white does. I like it with the white. I'll show you right away when I've got this one wing done. It just tidies that orange up really nice.
Yes, I really like them better with the white. Do we need polka dots or stripes or something on the glasses? Do you think that would be too heavy? I do think we need some white on the petals. Let's see what happens if I outline these in white as well. Oh, yeah, I like that better, too. I really like that better as well. And then the rest of the heart. I just wobbled you around the dots on the bodice. The bow still really gets lost. The bow really still gets lost. Um, how about if I use a different color on the bow instead of the purple, maybe an orange? Do I have an orange? I have red and greens, no orange with me, brown, no, have metallic, <gasps> what about, hey, hey, I have I have purple glitter paint. Thanks, Sherry. I'm going to use this purple glitter paint over that bow. Yeah. Maybe I'll do the glasses. I'll put that gold on the glasses. Let's see. Oh, that's pretty thick stuff. This is really thick stuff. This is stuff I inherited, kind of. Came with all the craft supplies I got from my neighbor. This is almost like a glitter glue, but it is called glitter paint. Let's do this. Hmm. Not sure it's doing anything. Oh, yeah. Dip it in the purple paint. There you go. Okay, it does have a bit of a glitter to it. It's very subtle. Still not a fan. <laughs> I'm going to keep adding stuff until I find something I like. I am going to go over the glasses and gold. Because we've got that gold on the outline of the wings. Not that we can see it anymore, so I'll go over that again as well. Thought I have some fun. Then around the wings again.
There, that's better. Um, this flower keeps following me. So I like that better with the gold on the glasses. It's quite subtle. Can't see it too bad. Blue and black. Interesting. Can we see that bow yet? No. All right. What the heck are we going to do with that bow? What are we going to do with that bow? Not sure. Not sure, not sure. I think I want to lighten the cheeks up just a little bit too. The cheeks are so, so dark pink. Neon? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Let's see. Where's take this? Okay, so it's got a bit of glitter to it. it does have a bit of glitter to it. But not enough for me to go, oh yeah, I like it. What about glitter glue? I have glitter glue. Look, I have this wonderful purpley glitter glue. Whoa, it's alive. If I do this, I can't touch her for a while. But I'm going to do this because, seriously, she needs something. There. That will work. Can you see it? Can it can you see the glitter? Okay, Belinda. What do you think? Ladies, is she done? Her body's way too big for her head and legs. <laughs> but that's okay. And I could have cut her shoulders down, but I didn't, which is okay, too. Not sure. Yeah, the glitter glue definitely punched it. I don't know how well you can see it. I can see it really good. Yeah, I think she's done too. She is a heart fairy. I think the petals still need a little bit of something. I'm not sure what. They're very plain. But that's okay too because it's just the dress, right? That was fun. I did a gonk. We did the gonk. We did the gnome. We did a fairy. I guess I'm going to have to figure out what the heck a hobgoblin is and do a hobgoblin next. Let's put them on something where everybody can see them. She's not one of my better fairies, I'll admit, but a goblin from Harry Potter. Oh, on screen, Kim. Ah, oh, thanks, Angela.
Yeah, the more I look at the fairy, I, the more I like her. She's growing on me, pigeon-toed, knock-kneed. <laughs> well, that was fun. Thank you guys all for your input. I love it when people give me the input. What a mess, you know. <laughs> I really could put these in a bigger container. Oh, look, it got wet and the ink smudged. Note, when you use Crayola markers and some gel pens, you get them wet and they do that. I had a fairy house do that the other day, too. Thanks, Shaz. Garbage. And see, I keep all these silly little bits of paper because I make little things out of them. So what have you guys been up to this weekend? Have you created anything? I started working on that six foot crochet caterpillar for my daughter. It needs 136 legs. I got 19 done yesterday, so I was really happy with that. But I can see that this caterpillar is gonna take me a lot longer than I anticipated. Well, I knew that from the get-go, but <laughs> just how long it took to do those few little legs. Oh, is my audio gone? Is my audio here? Is it gone? Am I, am I still here? My microphone doesn't have a line through it. Okay, so I was, I held up, I might chop off the fairy's head and give her a new head, I haven't decided yet. Some neurographic drawing, oh, very cool. Yeah. 136 legs. It's a caterpillar, but it's okay. And this is for my daughter that's going to be 40. <laughs> she asked for a caterpillar. That's, that's, that's okay. You know, I prefer it when my kids ask me for something so that I don't, just don't make something and then they never use it or they don't really want it or, you know, how that works. Look, I'm throwing some stuff in the garbage. Look, this is going in the garbage. So is this. Outline the fairy's legs. Yeah. I could do that. That would probably look 100% better. You're right. And you know, I could, no. Much better. Thank you. So, yeah. So I'm just still trying to use up stuff. And like I say, I put those... Kim bits on both my Meet Your Creativity and in my community tab. If you guys want to use them, please feel free. Don't just share them out with anybody. But they're, you know, little bits like this. Just so that if you want to 
you know, cut out hair or a flower or whatever, you've got a bit to do it with that is already marked. Because that takes up an awful lot of time, I find. You know, I'll, I'll cut out a flower and then I'll mark it. That takes up lots of time. Lots and lots of time. Now I have an extra pair of glasses. I don't think they'll go on the gonk. There would have to be some glasses. No, I can just go with my glasses in here. I saw a really cool near graphic one today. They did a whole page of scribbles like this. So they did a whole bunch of scribbles, right? And then in every space, they kind of went around like that so that everything had an inner shape. Does that make sense? They, they drew lines inside each of the scribble. Yeah, I know. I've got all these bits to use up. I really do. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I could do a, a journal. And I'm just doing an eclectic journal. But I'm thinking I definitely need a garden journal with all the flowers and everything I've got. So everything was kind of outlined. It was very, very cool. And then I, I can't remember if they colored it in or not, but I thought that was quite interesting. And then I thought, wow, wouldn't that make a great stencil? Because then you just pop out all the insides. Anyway. You think about it too much? Oh, no. Okay. I definitely need a bigger bin for this stuff. This is getting silly. What have I got? I have a stack of glasses. But they have stuff in them. You know. I really need to do some cleaning. <laughs> Got some wooden beads, some that I kind of decoupaged with some tissue paper. Um, where will you go? I can put you in here. It does create more bits. This was that glue thing that I spilt a few days ago all over the desk. This is a piece of crochet cotton that I dipped in glue and wrapped around a skewer. Can you see that? It's kind of fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Merging watercolor and then the lines. Was that, like, did you do a watercolor wash? Oh, look at how much easier that is. Magic. Did you do, like, a wash and then draw on it? A course that I just took recently, the lady did that for Mandala. It was beautiful. And of course, I don't have watercolors. I have Crayola markers, but I did that and it worked. 
I don't know what all this stuff is. Some of it's flour, some of it's garbage. Okay. I do have a Facebook group. It's called Meet Your Creativity. The link is in the description here. It's an open group. So as I say, those the Kimbits and the lined paper are there. I'm only going to leave them up for a week or so because I don't want, you know, I, I prefer it to be for a select group of people than just random folks coming and using it, you know. You're welcome. They're also on my community tab for here. Look, see this? Garbage. Magic. Those who aren't here all the time know I have a hard time throwing bits like this out. So I finished off a roll of tape the other day, and this was on the tape. So I was thinking if I did some, you know how I use my felt for stamp pads? That, that I take a lid and I take a circle of felt and then I put paint on it and then I use it as a stamp pad. I was thinking I could do some really cool buttons with this. Because I think they're both, they're level. That if I did it, you're welcome, Shaz. Welcome. Thanks for coming. It was nice to see you here. So I was thinking if I did that and I did it on a gel print, then I could let's try it on this here with a paintbrush. I've got a paintbrush that I can use for that. Thank you, thank you for coming. Uh, let's use white. Let's get the edges all done. I know that normally I would dip it, but I don't want one more thing to clean today. And then you put it down and you would get the double ring sort of. So it would work if I did it with the stamp pad because then you get the inner ring from the button and the outer ring. So then cut it around the outside and I could do some really cool paper buttons. You know, like let's do this ring so that you can see it. So then I would cut it around the white. I would actually follow something here. And then I could paint like little flowers or something on the button. And some leaves. And then I could have some really pretty little buttons to use in the journals that I say that I'm going to make but never do. Do you guys use these? You probably use them already for mark making. I haven't had one for a while, so. So then, of course, I would glue it down onto a piece of cardstock. So it had some substance. And I think those would make really cute little buttons or big buttons, you know. 
Um, I don't have, did I say I had green here? Green, I do have a green. Do a couple of little leaves. Put green centers in the flowers. Sorry, I'm taking you guys off on a journey, a Kim journey again. Yeah. So then I would take this and cut out a blank piece of paper. Uh, where's that white paper I was chopping up? That piece of white paper I was chopping up. There it is. Here it is over here. Trace it out. Trace it out around the outside. Cut it. This is this is how I would make buttons. Yeah. Paper buttons for a journal. So then I would cut this out of the paper. Just a blank piece of paper because these would all be the same size if I'm using this, right? So this would be like the template. I don't know how big that is. Like hole punch size. That is a uh, one and a quarter inch, one and a half, almost one and a half. Not quite one and a half inch. Anyway, I liked it because it had the double ring because a lot of times I can't get that second ring. Okay, I'll show you what I would do. Bear with me. So then... I would fold this blank one in four. I would take a needle or a, I guess I'll have to use my awl because my needles are upstairs. And I would poke a hole by the quarter because I folded it in four, right? Poke a hole. Oh, put that away too. So yeah, I would do it on like a double piece of cardstock or a single piece of cardstock. Yeah. So then I've got the four holes like you would have on a button and I would mark them and then I would either stitch or something. But then you could, if you sewed it down, you could use it as the closure, you know, if you had thick cardstock behind, you could use it as a string closure or you could use it as a tuck spot, you know, do two holes, sew it down onto the page and you could tuck things behind it. But I would definitely put thread through it with the threads hanging out. Like I've done other buttons. Let me just find them. I did some very plain paper buttons. Do, do, do. You know, I have to go through my bins, my envelopes. Here, they weren't even far. But I, I freehand cut these ones. And then I just looped some thread through and tied them. And on a page, they look really cute. Yeah, I could do clusters of them too. But I, I did... Oh, I thought of these turquoise one because that's what I was working with that day. But because I've got this, see, like, these are all hand-drawn, which I don't mind. Right? I hand-drawn and... Blah, 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 blah. Here we go again. I hand-drew and cut them and just did two holes and, and did them. They're wonky. They're fun. But if I wanted something a little bit more precise especially if I was going to do some painting on it, I would use this. So if you had them on a page, Belinda, let me just grab one of these little book things I was working on the other day. So if you had it like on the corner of a page, you could have Put a couple of beads on these and have them sticking out. You could use it 
as a page tab, you know, sticking out with the threads hanging down. If you put it down at the corner, just glue across the bottom and the side and use it as a tuck. Hey, Curzo, welcome, welcome. How you doing? Oh, you're welcome. I didn't think about it until I saw it when I took it apart. And it's like, oh, that would make great button outlines. So I'm pretty sure that I could just use it on a stamp pad too. But I'm thinking that because I do so much with my gel prints this way and then decorate them, if I used paint, that would work good for me. I could use whatever paint's going to show up on the print that I'm using. I guess, too, thinking about it, I don't even have to stamp it. I could draw the outside and then the inside, right? Draw the inside. Draw the outside and cut it. I could do it that way, too. Hey, Don, welcome, welcome. I was just going on about... <laughs> she's kind of I'm not a big fan of her little head and her skinny legs but I do like her so I mean I, I could trace it instead of stamping it but I like the idea of stamping and then doing it so yeah we got the fairy we got the gnome we got the gonk it was a productive day. I definitely would have done something different, I think, with the hair and stuff. Yeah, her legs are <laughs> little itty bitty legs. Got to have fun when you do these things, right? Like, the wonkier they are, the more fun they are. Is there a village that they all live in? Um, No, but there could be. I finished off the fairy houses I did. These ones. But they're all small fairy houses. Let's do them... Put them on the page. Oh, no. I did the, uh, finished these guys that I was working on my live last week, was it? So I could do a, a journal with Yeah, uh, this one smudged because I used Crayola markers for around the windows. And this one got wet. So it, it but it, it still looks okay. It's got character. So yeah, I did these, when was it last week? I think sometime. But now I'm on a... a I think I want to make a whole bunch of paper buttons because, but I've got those houses and then I've got these ones, these houses that I do. Like, I, you know, I do those houses. And then I've got these houses. This is a cluster of those other houses. But then I've got these bigger houses.
So <laughs> I was thinking of doing a journal, um, people in your neighborhood, and then having like the houses. And then I, I don't know. Yeah, well, I would I would make them fit. Well, I've got lots of parts, Dawn. I have lots of parts for a whimsical journal. Lots and lots. It, it never ends, right? Like, I just love my chickens. I've been making chickens again, too. So I just have to figure out how I want to do it. <laughs> what else have I made? What else? I've got lots of stuff, I tell you. Lots of stuff. Oh, look, there are the fence posts. Got all these corner tuck things that I painted. This is why I need to do a uh, floral journal because I love painting flowers. I do not have bees and butterflies. I have fish. I have lots of fish. And my fish. I have fish and cats and frames and flowers. Mushrooms. Fish. Lots of fish. I was on a fish kick for a while, so I have lots of little del fish. Lots of fish. I have a whole jar of fish that I still have to decorate, to embellish. <laughs> it, it just never ends. I, I think of something and, and there I go, gone. And then I've got these cats. Wild load of cats. My love bugs. I like doing love bugs. So I don't have butterflies, but I got bugs. So I don't have a lack of things to use. And of course, my Goonie Birds, my ladies. Inchies and Twinchies and made these cat flips. I was doing prompts. And I ended up doing, so I, I did them so that they would flip up out of a journal. But there was tree stumps and cats and triangles and edges. <laughs> no, I don't have turtles either. See, there are a few things I can still do. Definitely, definitely stuff I could do. You've seen my Goonie Birds, right? Like, I think Goonie Birds are what started this whole madness of making things with bits. Yeah, I think it was the Goonie Birds. No, it was the flower cards. I think I started with ATCs and it just evolved.
The love bugs are easy. You just take a hunk of paper, fold it in half, write love on it. And cut around it. However you like. When you open it up, you've got symmet symmetrical wings and you just embellish as. I don't have Lorax trees. Do I have? Let me think. No, I don't have Lorax trees. I have masks and guinea birds and my ladies, my scarecrows. But I think the scarecrows need a journal of their own when we did the scarecrows. Yeah. Thanks. I did this on the live. I was I was helped by the participants in the live too, you know. Yes, and oh, don't go in the paint. Don't fall in the paint. You know, boots and and glasses and hats and And then, of course, I used yarn for the uh, straw because I could. I don't even know what we started with these. I don't think I had planned on doing scarecrows that day. I think it just was one of those surprise things that took over. So yeah, those, my Goonies, these are my favorite. I want to do a kid's book with these, an ABC book. These I have a lot of fun with. These are my absolute favorites to play with. I get a little crazy with them. These are all using my gel prints. Oh, the chickens. Yeah, I've got chickens too. <laughs> my chickens. Those ones are so, so easy to, you know. Sometimes you just have to do easy stuff. Yeah, I was going to use bits and it evolved into the scarecrows. Yep. Oh, it was a scrap busting one, right? I wanted to do a scrap busting <laughs> video and, and we ended up with scarecrows. Because I think I was watching Dawn and she was saying something about doing scrap busting. And so I was trying to come up with ideas to use for scrap busting. This is Edna. That's the teacher for the classroom. So yeah, Dawn was saying something about having a challenge with one of her friends 
for scrap busting. And that's how this scarecrow's evolved because I was trying to think of scrap busting. I know. I don't bust them all either. But I end up with a lot of fun. Have lots of fun. I mean, that's how these came about. It was it was from Dawn's stream that, you know, how many ways can you use your scraps? Well, that's how my secretaries came about. But yeah, doing this only creates more, I find. Those are just painted. These I used scraps on. My paper dolls. I had fun with paper dolls. Oh, focus. Come on. Doesn't want to focus. Nope. Is it the white, maybe? No. Oh, we're way out of zoom here. Come. There. Yeah, I've got paper dolls, too. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I have to hold them close. Yeah, cameras decided to be a pain. So I want to do a journal, a lady's journal. Because between my paper dolls and, and all the ladies that I paint. Yeah. But I love my paper dolls. They have names. Can't remember them offhand, but they all have names. I think they need blurbs with female attitude kind of thing, you know? Like this one, seriously. I can see her looking at her kids going, oh my word, what have you done? But I had a lot of fun doing these. Now I feel like making more. <laughs> Maybe Tuesday we'll make paper dolls. We'll see. Anyway, that's three hours, guys. I appreciate you hanging out and, and putting up with my <laughs> strange ramblings and, you know, the way my mind works, kind of. And it takes a left now and again. Thank you. From the Golden Girls? Yeah. <laughs> Have a lot of fun. Seriously. And I find that when you guys, when I'm here with you guys and you're egging me on going, oh, she needs this. And I can see it. So it just really, really helps. Oh, you guys inspire me every time. Yeah, which one? Which one? Yeah, we can make some. Let's do it Tuesday. Gray curly hair. Oh. This one. That one? This is Marge. See, I did write their names on back or something. That's Marge. 
This one's Sally. Yeah, their names are on the backs. <laughs> but yeah, actually, when I first started streaming and I had these guys, I was going to put them on popsicle sticks and they would have like a little blurb, blurb like, be right back or whatever. And this one was the very first one I did. And that's why she has a beer bottle dress because I was trying to find something to use for clothing. Again, these are done out of magazine stuff, the first ones. These ones are done out of more gel prints. like. But yeah, Tuesday, is it a date? Make paper dolls? Okay, Tuesday, it's a deal. Awesome. On that note, like I say, it's been three hours. I really appreciate you guys hanging around and egging me on and helping me create these interesting critters. Like I do have gnomes and stuff somewhere. I've got stuff everywhere. I've got more gonks than gnomes. What? Uh, 1245 Central. No, I, I stream Sunday, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 12.45 p.m. Central. So it's currently 4.02 p.m. here now. Really? It's 4 o'clock. So it's 4 o'clock my time. So if you guys can transfer it to wherever you are, that's cool because I, I don't have a brain for that. So 12.45 noon here. And our beautiful fairy's glitter glue is still wet. So she's still got to dry. Okay, it's five there. So you're an hour difference. So it would be 1.45 your time. You usually make it to my lives on time, Belinda. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it and all your help. And I will see you on Tuesday. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Yeah, Sunday, Tuesday, Friday, 1245, I stream. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful night. Take care, everybody. Big hugs. Bye, guys. You're welcome. I love you guys being here. See ya. Oh, don't forget, I've got those, those um, lines and bits of doodle stuff if you guys are creating and you need something different. So see ya. Bye.